He was a very bold person. He was a very brash person. Anything he did was going to be the biggest and the largest and the best. William Mogier Tweed was born on April 3rd, 1823, in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Raised in a middle-class family with Scottish-Irish roots, he apprenticed under his father as a chairmaker at 11, a saddler at 13, and a bookkeeper for a brush-making firm, whose owner's daughter he would go on to marry at the age of 21. However, Tweed's excitable, even thrill-seeking nature led him to join the ranks of New York City's infamous Volunteer Fire Department. Some historians say this was when he was first exposed to crime, as the volunteer fire brigades of his time functioned more as gangs, competing with each other across ethnic and geographic lines. There are multiple accounts of rivaling fire brigades brawling against one another when both arrived at the same burning building, neglecting to put out the fire. Known for his axe-wielding skills, Tweed fit in with the aggressive environment of volunteer firefighting, and soon rose to become foreman of the America's Fire Company No. 6 on which he worked. During his time, Big Six adopted the logo of a ferocious, snarling Bengal tiger. This symbol would go on to embody Tammany Hall's legacy under Tweed's leadership. In 1850, a spat with the chief engineer of Big Six led to his expulsion from the brigade. However, Tweed's exploits had caught the attention of the Democratic Party, which in turn entered him into the race for aldermen of the 7th Ward centered in the Lower East Side. And so, Tweed entered the world of Gilded Age politics, winning the Alderman race in 1851. Over the course of his political career, he would hold positions as a state senator, congressman, and most importantly, Grand Sachem of Tammany Hall. Tweed's first exposure to the extortion and embezzlement that would define him in the years to come was in his career as a lawyer. Tweed received a certification to practice law Judge George G. Barnard, although he had never went to law school and knew little about the subject, and proceeded to extort money from his clients under the guise of providing legal counsel. Tweed's relationship with the city of New York was a long and difficult one, one that lasted a staggering 22 years. Through his political scandals, viciousness, and embezzlements, he would indirectly build New York City from the ground up culturally, politically, and economically. Tammany Hall was not only a political phenomenon, but a cultural one as well. Tweed capitalized on welcoming new immigrants at the time, specifically from Ireland. Unlike many of his political contemporaries, he accepted the new ethnic groups that were making homes in the city of New York, and even welcomed the Catholic religion, which was unlike his Protestant fellowship. Tweed knew that in exchange for his welcoming of Irish immigrants to New York, he would have to get something in return. Their votes. To use government as a way to help real people with their real life problem, and in exchange for that, expect loyalty from them. You know, expect their support of the election as a result of it. That whole concept, which today is considered the the, the everyday give and take of politics 
That was all new during during that time. He willingly and knowingly and very proudly associated with working class people who were thought of as lower class at the time. Boss Tweed also influenced Wall Street. His scandals involved multi-millionaires Jay Gould and James Fisk. The financial sector was yet another medium of corruption and graft used by the members of Tammany Hall. Gould and Fisk are probably most famous today for their, um, their conspiracy, their scheme to corner the national gold market in 1869, which Tweed played a major part in. Um, but um, when Gould and Fisk rose to power in, on Wall Street by taking over the Erie Railroad Company, one of the first things they did was form an alliance with Boss Tweed. They made Boss Tweed a, a member of the Erie Railroad Board of Directors, and then Boss Tweed started using Wall Street through Golden Fisk for his political operation. So the, the, the two worked together. Tweed's unabashedly crooked political machine also inspired the media, particularly Thomas Nast, to react just as viciously. Nast began publishing political cartoons condemning and exposing Tammany Hall's fraudulent machinations in the magazine Harper's Weekly. Although Tweed would have been in jail at this time, his scandals would propel the careers of people like Nast, and Nast would go on to greatly influence all facets of American politics including presidential elections during the mid to late 19th century. In that environment, the New York Times took the story and they ran with it. They took these ledger books, they, they um, ran them on the front page under this big headline saying the secret account. And the, um, the account showed in a very dramatic way um, how, for instance, at that big courthouse, the money that was supposedly spent on chairs, for instance, would buy enough chairs to, that if you put them in to them, they would make a line three miles long. Or enough money for a carpet that they could buy a strip of carpet from New York stretching to Boston. And things like that, that the New York Times documented, and they explained to people in a very understandable way so that the corruption um, became very clear. And that's what started the ball unraveling. Although the remnants of Boss Tweed's era may seem like a distant past to a distant history, it's always there if you know where to look. <laughs>